All right, so in this video, I want to talk about the concept of torque, and I want to talk about the concept of rotation and the concept of levers, right? So typically, what concept of, let's say we've got a lever, right? Well, and we've seen seesaws before. Let me, let me put that up here. Let's say we've got a seesaw, right? right? And we've got two different weights on the seesaw, right? And now we know that the seesaw, if the seesaw is balanced, the seesaw is not moving, that means that the forces, uh, or more accurately, that means that the torque on opposite sides is equal. Right? Torque is essentially the, uh, the force that causes something to rotate. Right? If we see, for example, let's say we've got a fan. Now, if this fan is rotating, that means the torque pushing it this way is greater than the torque this way. Right? And that's why we see the fan rotating. So the fan will only rotate, but the fan will only rotate if the torque is unbalanced, right? So if we if we see if I tell you that the fan is not rotating, that means torque is balanced. And same thing if I tell you that the seesaw is not rotating, or the lever is not rotating, that means the torque is balanced. We can see, by the way, a couple of different kinds of seesaws. We can also see a seesaw that looks like this, or a lever that looks like this. Right? Let's say this is a chain uh, suspending the let's say it's suspending a metal bar, and it looks like that. It's the same principle, right? And so, how do we determine torque on, on either side of the, uh, of the lever? Torque is equal to, so torque is typically, typically represented by the Greek letter, the Greek letter tau, right? Torque is equal to the force times the distance, right? So what that means is, uh, let's say that I put a five newton force, right? Let's say, let's go back to the lever. So again, let's say this is the chain suspending the lever. And I've got a 5 Newton force here, right? And let's say I've got a 7 Newton force here, right? Well, how do we determine the torque? Well, the torque is going to be equal to the distance from the center, right? So 5 Newtons times, let's say this is 3 meters, and let's say this is 4 meters, right? So 5, five Newtons times 3 meters is going to give us 15. Right, so we're going to have 15 newtons per meter here, or sorry, newton meters of torque that are pushing it this way. And 7 times 4, so we're going to have 28 newtons this way, right, uh, newton meters. And so, of course, the, the torque is going to cause the object to rotate this way. The, the bar is not balanced. The bar is going to rotate. Right, uh, it's going to rotate uh, in this direction, and so this is the essential, the basic principle of torque and the basic principle of rotation. And so, uh, a typical practice problem of something like this is going to be, they're going to give you maybe they're going to say that that we've got a a bar, right? Let's say we've got a bar, and actually we can have a we can have either two forces on opposite sides, or we can just a be asked to calculate the torque, right? So let's say we've got a um, Let's say we got a we've got a blade here, or we've got a, a lever here. Then it's attached at one at a vertex here at some point here, um, and that's the attachment point, right? So the question is, for example, if I were to move a if I were to put a box on this on this uh, lever here versus putting a box on this lever here, right? It's going to change the torque. Um, and so this is another example. It's uh, let's say if it's five meters from the end from the center versus twenty meters from the center, the torque is going to increase, right? And okay, so Final point to make is a, a typical example would be, um, let me draw a lever, right? One last lever. And we've got a box here. And let's say the box, this box is five kilograms. And let's say the box here is two kilograms, right? And let's say the distance here is let's say 10 meters, let's say, well, let's say 12 meters. And so the question is, what is this distance? Assuming that the lever is balanced, what is this distance, right? And so how would you calculate that? Well, the answer, the, the way that you would calculate that is first you would want to figure out what force is being exerted, right? We're given, we're given mass and we want to figure out force. And so 50 kilograms times uh, G is going to give us, or five kilograms, excuse me, times G is going to give us 50 newtons, right? 50 newtons of force being exerted here. And then this is 2 times 10. It's going to be 20 newtons of force being exerted here, right? And so now what we want to do is we want to set the forces equal to each other, right? So 50 newtons on this side, or we want to set the forces 
convert them to torque and set them equal to each other, times the distance is equal to this side, uh, 20 newtons times 12 meters of distance, right? Because we know that they have to be equal for, for the lever to be balanced, right? And so typically when we do a problem like this, we ignore the weight of the bar. Um, the bar doesn't count. And so, yeah, and so we do 20 times 12, that gives us 240 newton meters is equal to 50 newtons times D, 240 divided by 50, right? And the math doesn't quite work out that evenly, uh, but it's going to be roughly five, a little bit less than five. It's going to be four point something. Uh, I, I say that because 250 divided by 50 is equal to five. So 240 divided by 50 is a little less than five, right? And what that means is that the distance is equal to, and I'm going to say roughly equal to uh, five meters, right? Um, and so we, we could say that this is roughly five meters away. It's really, it's going to be like 4.8, 4.9. So if we were given a multiple choice question, I could, you know, we, we would understand that it would be between like 4.7 and five. And so this is how you solve a problem like this. Uh, this is how the concept of levers, and this is the concept of torque on the MCAT.